Hey everybody, it's Rob here. We got a lot of changes for Season 5 for the Barbarian and I want to make this video to talk about the state of Barbarian, about the buffs and nerfs and the top builds. So as you know, we have seen several nerfs to the key passives and to various other things here. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't seen the final patch notes on all the Ubers, so the, the are things that might change but this video is basically gonna be um, assuming that these ubers are slightly nerfed but like still playable and still in the game talking about Crown of Lucia and Shadow of Herantheal and stuff. I also have a tier list here roughly for the barb and also rough calculations for all the nerfs. So um, many people ask me all the time obviously we don't know exactly how the math will work in the end because the wording especially on gushing wounds is a big is a bit uh, weird. So I'm just assuming that Gushing Wounds is about a 15 times damage loss. On the Unbridled Rage, we have bonus damage reduced from 100 to 45. But what that basically means if you go in-game, and we're going to talk about Upheaval and Hoda as well after, Unconstrained, um, is basically reduced to 35%. But that still means that we're getting 35% bonus. And as Berserking grants us 25 bonus, we get another 35. We're still going to have a 1.6 rather than a 2x multiplier. So we have 35% damage loss on Unbridled Rage and on Unconstrained we have 25% damage loss. Uh, this was initially assumed to be higher. So we are losing damage in all the bar builds, but then they have buffed a couple of things here, such as Upheaval uh, by 15% plus the runes. They have also buffed Oda by 10% and there's also some pretty cool changes here on the runes, on the aspect. And we also got uh, some pretty nice changes to the uniques, such as Hellhammer here, giving us a pretty significant damage increase here. So um, Hellhammer and uh, also the changes to the Hoda Barb with Ancestral Force is putting these builds quite a bit up again. So down here I did like some just rough calculations. Take this all for granted, so we don't know exactly. Like Hoda is going to stay roughly the same. Upheaval is going to get a slight buff. Direct Bash is going down like four times X. Bleed Bash is going down like crazy because they also nerfed the Bash Tempers. We're not going to play any more Bleed Bash. Uh, Direct Bash is the new play. Uh, we have Warwind being uh, quite nerfed on the Bleed side. Uh, Direct is not that heavily nerfed. I think Direct Warwind is still going to be very strong. Flay is nerfed, but Flay was insanely strong. Uh, Thorns is also nerfed, but then they are buffing the Razor Plates a little bit. So this is just the buffs and nerfed. And you can see here the rough uh, tier information. By how much it's getting nerfed, we have the Rumble nerf, Needle Flare nerf here on Thorns. Um, but basically putting this all together, I made like a rough draft here of a tier list. And I think the best build for Barbarian is going to still be the Bash. It's probably not going to be S+, plus, but it's going to be still S tier. And I already have a planner for it that I'm going to be linking in the description. You guys may be familiar with the starter set here. So basically just rocking normal Bash. There's also a bit of a hope that they, that they um, bug fix some of the Pain Gorgeous bug, like not benefiting uh, from adaptability and all these other things. Um, but this is unconfirmed. We will see uh, once we get the final notes and the final uh, uniques here for the game. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, even though we have, like, a lot of patch notes, it doesn't really, like, tell the whole story with the new uniques and stuff. So we might have to wait a little longer. I'm still going to make a, a tier list, um, a full tier list with all classes next days. We already have a draft for that. But this one looks pretty insane. Like, you can either play Crown of Lucion or you can still play with the Harlequin's Crest. Especially Harlequin's Crest, two else might, big damage reduction. And then with Starless Sky and Shard of Rerun Field, even if they nerf this a bit, it's still going to be very, very strong. And there's also another version here with Pain Gorgers, which they are also changing quite a bit. They are now giving four ranks to basic skill. So we're probably going to have a rank 20 bash or higher right here. That's going to be pretty insane. And they also give cooldown, but they re removed the crit chance. And the crit chance is now shifted to um, items such as Starless Sky that you can now use on your bash bar with the Shard of Rerun Field. Because now a basic skill are becoming a spender. Uh, basically proccing the Starless Sky, giving you yet another multiplier. And basically, uh, Starless Sky, together with Shard of Virenthiel, are kind of making up for the Bash nerfs and the Key Passive nerfs already. So it's still looking to be pretty strong on the Bash side of things. And this is probably going to be one of my early builds that I will play. I will play a little bit different build for leveling. I'm going to make a separate build guide uh, for leveling. But just to talk about it real quick here, this is like some... some rough draft for a leveling tier list. Um, Barb is not going to be the best, but Barb is still going to be very solid and we're going to be leveling super fast, five, six hours to level 100 if you're playing in a group. 
Anyways, and you can basically play um, Upheaval, you can play Whirlwind, or you can play the new Hoda for leveling. Those are all going to be very solid options. I'm probably starting Upheaval, then transitioning into Whirlwind buff, but I'm going to make a separate video on this. So, Direct Bash is probably the best. You don't want to play Bleed anymore because Gushing Wounds is Giga nerfed. Um, and this build, again, on the PTR, I was still able to hit for billions and billions. In fact, I have the clear here. And you can already see this was with the nerfed bash and we were hitting again i'm gonna link the full video below we were hitting here for 8 billion and this was as i'm hovering my weapons here this was with um obviously the crown of lucian and stuff but this was also with the nerfed bash temper i don't know if you, we can see it here in the video but like i basically had no bash temper um to speak of here we had the 12 percent or whatever okay i can't find it it's somewhere here in the, yeah, you see here, Bash Cleaves for 64. This is like the nerfed one. So uh, it's still hitting for billions and billions. So even though it's nerfed heavily, Direct Bash still looks very, very strong. And then on A tier, and I was like actually thinking maybe putting this in S tier, is the Dust Devil Whirlwind Bob. Uh, we're also going to be playing a Direct version here. And this one is just going to be fantastic. Um, we can play this completely without any Ubers, but since we are getting these uh, crazy unique changes, um, from my calculation, we're going to have permanent shouts with uh, Harlequin's Crest, because we are getting 50% if we are masterworking this, and we are having the Bolt's Chieftain, and yeah, basic shout cooldown is 25 seconds, so we can get like up to a 70% reduction, so times 0 0.7. Uh, this is going to be the cooldown, a minus 25, so we're going to have like 7 seconds cooldown on these shots. And yeah, we can reduce it with Bolt's Chieftain down to like 1.5 seconds or something, um, if we are master working it on the amulet, but probably going to have a couple seconds cooldown. And this is the same for Iron Skin, so we're going to be spinning and we're going to be winning, and it's going to be great. We're still going to have a lot of resistances, and we don't have to worry about armor cap. So just the fact alone that the Barbarian can wear this many Uber Uniques, and the Uber Uniques are basically all getting buffed. We're also going to get a 100% crit chance here. Uh, it means that the Whirlwind buff is still going to be insane. And we are now not playing Bleed anymore. But we are rocking Unconstrained here. And we also have the new aspect here, Anger Management, for fully 100% um, uptime on Berserking. And this is just going to make the, bar, the build so beginner friendly. If you're like rocking anger management from the start, you're not going to have any issues keeping your berserking. You're going to have fury all the time. You're going to deal good damage. And obviously later on, once you start getting those uber uniques, which uh, or the mythic uniques, which seem to be buffed by a lot because you only need to pay one sticky and stone. You need to uh, <laughs> not worry that much. You can't. You can reset the bosses instantly. So I'm thinking that it's going to be easier than ever to get your hands on the mythic or on the uber uniques. And they are like just so strong. And Barb can wear four of them. Or you can even go with five, man. Casuals hate this trick. This is going to be the uber mythic Barb. And Whirlwind is one of the best builds for that. You can even add a Doombringer here if you want. <laughs> and go for like the six out of six. But I think this is going to be very strong. It's not going to be good for pushing. But there's not going to be a pit leaderboard anyways. And this is going to be easy peasy uh, speed farming pit 100 yet again with Whirlwind Barb. I'm probably going to make a separate build guide going into all the details and all the different setups on Whirlwind. But just know Whirlwind strong, guys. It's going to be very good for leveling. The Twister Glyph has been bug fixed finally. So it's very nice. Um, then we have the Flay Barb. Flay Barb is uh, getting nerfed by the Gushing Wounds. But on top of this, we are also getting the benefit from Shard of Iranthiel and Starless Sky. And I'm thinking similar to the Bash Barb, it's getting a bit more nerfed than the Bash Barb because on Bash we didn't have to play Bleed. On Flay you always play Bleed. So you're getting more nerf on Flay than on Bash. So Flay is 8 here, but I think this is still going to be one of the best boss killers, especially because they are nerfing the boss HP divided by 5. So with Flay, you're probably just going to Flay the boss once and then Rupture and he's already dead. So... Flay Barb is still going to be cooking very well. They also buffed the Rage of Haragath to have crit chance, which is very nice with Gushing Wounds. And it also has a 60% chance on Lucky Hit to reset your cooldowns now. So yeah, Rage of Haragath got a big buff here. Shot of Iran Steel plus Starless Guy. Almost kind of make up for the Flay nerf. Not quite, but Flay still solid AT, I would say. Um, then we have the new stuff. So on Hoda. We are getting the Ancestral Force here. This is the updated version already. So this one is now 20x plus double damage against bosses. And 
I think this could be very good for leveling. One of the runes here, the Furious Hammer of the Ancients, has been uh, buffed by quite a bit to knock down the enemies and also to scale uh, very nice with your crit. And I think this is going to be a very strong leveling build early on. I don't really think the endgame version is that strong because unfortunately they nerfed the Unbridled Rage so much. But it's going to be a very solid build for leveling. If you want to do this dungeon here to get the Ancestral Force, the uh, Sunken Ruins in Scots Glen, very easy. You get this item and you're just going to be starting to smash basically. And uh, you're going to be smashing very good. We'll have to see how it does in the end game. I have it in B tier, like not completely insane or not as good as the other three. But these three, I think, are the main builds that will dominate. And then you have Hoda and Upheaval, kind of with a question mark. They might still be pretty good, but um, we'll have to see. On Upheaval, same thing. I have actually two planners here. Um, there's a leveling guide here for Upheaval. Uh, this is right in the planner, so going to be very comfortable for leveling. I also have a Hoda leveling planner. Uh, you can see them all if you just click on um, on my builds. It's going to be a link in the description as well, basically, where you see all my Season 5 builds. And I also do have a bunch of leveling builds. They're not fully done yet, but I have Upheaval, Whirlwind, and Hoda leveling. And yeah, Hoda leveling, I think, has a lot of potential if you get this aspect. And then um, on Upheaval, it's pretty cool. You can play with the Hellhammer. And um, I wanted to try, like not for leveling, but once you get the Hellhammer in the end game, I want to try a full burning build because upheaval ignites the ground and basically does 10k damage. And this is multiplied by your main set. And you can have like over 3k main set because this also gives you a lot of main set. And uh, you're going to be doing like 30, 40,000 base damage that is then multiplied with everything. So I have a pretty cool build if you want to check it out. It's like a. Just a burn uber build, like, like basically fully focused around burn damage. Keep in mind, burn can't crit and you also can't scale it with your bleed stuff because it's burn. It's a different damage over time skill. But it might be pretty cool and I'm very excited to try this. Definitely gonna, I don't think it's a top build, but it's definitely gonna be a cool build to try. Yeah, and then we kind of have thorns. There is a big nerfs uh, to the entire thorns. They, they fixed several bugs. They kept the earthquake glyph. Um, but what they did as well is they buffed the uh, razor plate. So the Razor Plate, I'm going to show this to you real quick, is now 200% X. So uh, this one got another 50% increase, basically. And Thorns, I think, is still a very solid build. Uh, might even sneak up to 80 in the very end, we'll see. Uh, Death's Blow has the new uh, third weapon. I think it's called Third Blade. But unfortunately, Death's Blow was not really looking that great overall. We'll have to see. Maybe they have some buffs to Third Blade uh, with the final notes. We still haven't seen them. But there is a good chance that the third blade is going to get, well, a little bit of love. And then it might be a valid build. Um, Overkill certainly got some buffs. Um, I think it's a little bit stronger, but it, it just was not strong enough on the overkill side. So overkill here, you see a, four, a 6 to death blow now and also 45. But it's just not enough, I think, to make death blow like really viable, unfortunately. And then we have Dust Devil Double Swing, like very similar to the Whirlwind. We have the Twister Glyph Fix. It's still going to be strong, but I think Whirlwind is just superior to spawn your uh, stuff with. And to spawn your Dust Devils with. And then we have C tier, the Rand. And this might be a contender that moves up into B tier. I think I'm actually going to put it up into, into B tier. I might even make planners for this. Because they got some buffs, nothing significant. They also got nerfed with the Bleeds. So I'm not sure, like this one is like kind of between B and C tier. But basically, top of C, maybe even uh, into B tier. And then we have Kick, Charge, Lunging Strike, Frenzy, Leap Quake. And Leap Quake, you know, you can play the Frog Barb. And that would probably be uh, somewhere here in B tier. Because the Frog Barb, even though the, the Bleed is gone, it's still going to be a solid build, like where you just leap. But you need Turrell's Might for this. Like, it's not really going to work uh, unless you, you have the Turrell's Might ready and then you like leap around all the time that so this works. They also did fix uh, the bug where your leap would not reset, as far as I don't know. And here, fixed an issue where aspect of the giant stride did not reduce the cooldown of leap after killing enemies. This was like a pain point for the frog barb. I have a video up on the channel if you want to check that out. Uh, I'll probably focus on the top barb builds. I'm ho hopefully I'm going to make uh, at least two build guides for Bash and for Whirlwind here. Uh, next days but the time is very slim season already starts in four days so there's a lot of stuff uh, to look into here and then i wanted to quickly talk about some of the rest of the uniques and why i don't think they are that great probably the biggest hope we had was ramalaldi's but ramalaldi's kind of didn't even get a big buff because 
Okay, this one went up by like 0.1% on the secondary. But the problem is it now drains 10 fury every second. Freaking 10, man. That's like such a big fury drain. And uh, the buffs were not really like making up for it. So I think Ramalaldi's is not is still not gonna be that great. Maybe there's gonna be one or two builds. I'm, I'm happy it has 90 strength now. But uh, yeah, still not that powerful, unfortunately. And the one thing I was very disappointed is uh, battle trends. Like, I mean, we were asking for viable frenzy builds, but this one is still kind of meh. I would love to see this actually like buffing frenzy itself. You know, the frenzy amulet doesn't buff frenzy, but buffs every other skill. It's like, kind of weird. So I would kind of like to see like this buffing uh, frenzy itself. Yeah, Rage of Haragas, uh, very good throughout the entire class, 60% now. And also crit chance on the base, that's like really strong. You can get 100% crit chance easy with the um, Starless Sky Ring together. And you can miss crit chance on things like Pain Gorgers that now don't have crit chance. But you know, we're going to be completely fine with this, because Pain Gorgers now have cooldown and plus 4 to basic skill for your bash build. So uh, it's pretty cool to see um, these kind of things making up for the crit loss. Uh, yeah, Gorge Devastating, I'm still not convinced about this, like basically the Whirlwind build doesn't have any direct potion of Whirlwind, so this is uh, usually like not really that strong because it's only buffing Whirlwind, but it's not really buffing like, you know, everything else, which is the Dust Devil and the Turrell's Might that is really doing your damage in the end here. And then this one I was also pretty disappointed about is Tusk Helm. So Tusk Helm, it also got nerfed, you see here, okay, the Berserking damage went up a lot, that's very nice, but then... Instead of Max Fury, it now gives Max Life, which Max Fury is like way better. Uh, then instead of Attack Speed, it now gives less Attack Speed and only um, on Tuesdays, like only when you're Berserking. So that's also kind of yikes. And instead of Aggressive Resistance, it now gives Movement Speed. Barb was already at Movement Speed cap, and we basically lost all the damage reduction uh, that, were, that made Tusk Helm so good with this Aggressive Resistance, especially if you're Master Working, which usually gives you like 40% damage reduction when you're berserking and this has been completely nerfed and, and is gone so I had like high hopes for Tusk Helm but unfortunately like it's gonna be Crown of Lucian or Shako all the way you'll never want to play this it, at least it's my guess uh, yeah Red Furore kind of in a similar ball it kind of got a nerf you don't have the resource gen anymore that's not really cool I, I like the item better than it was before so I don't know some of these unique reworks feel kind of weird a Ring of Reverence here this one might be pretty cool for the rent build Instead of um, four second ICD, it now has only one second ICD. So that might might make a rent build maybe creep up into A tier. Not top, but could be pretty decent. And yeah, overall, obviously, like I said in the intro, Barbarian is going to benefit a lot from being able to wear all these uber uniques. Like if you need toughness, man, you can just equip this Doombringer. You can equip your Starter Sky, the Turrell's Might. I mean, just looking at the Turrell's Might here, the Grandfather, the Turrell's Might, if you are able to get a GA on damage reduction, it's going to go 50% more to 30 damage reduction. And then you can also master work this. It's going to be like 45% damage reduction or something. Or 50% damage reduction. It's going to be... <laughs> it's going to be insane, man, with Turrell's Might. And uh, yeah, Barbarian can also wear the Grandfather. And that's been a, a big buff here as well. Just getting a ton of stats and also a ton of additive damage here. 150 base, 300 again. So overall, I think Barbarian basically has not gotten any of the core or the um, main stat scaling buffs. It has gotten some buffs to some of the core skills, such as Hoda and Upheaval. Probably not enough to make them viable. I think we still mostly play Generator and Whirlwind. But I like the Whirlwind stuff. Like, Whirlwind is still going to be pretty cool. Um, maybe in the start it's not going to feel that strong, but once you get those uber uniques online, I think Barb is going to be rocking just like before. And it seems to be very easy to acquire. A lot easier, as easy as ever, to acquire those uber uniques. Again, only one sticky in stone, increased drop chance, you can even get multiple ubers per boss. And uh, you don't have to go through two loading screens to kill the bosses, you can just instantly resummon them once you have the materials. So that's going to be uh, going up like crazy. The maximum life is increased even more. And overall, I'm going to make a tier list update. I don't think Barbarian has any S plus tier builds, um, but Bash tier still sits comfortable in S tier. And for speed farming, I also think that um, Dust Devil Whirlwind sits in S tier. But uh, for pit pushing, it's going to be very much struggling against the boss. Even though they nerfed the boss HP, I think it's still going to be very tough for the Whirlwind Barb without bleeds. 
to deal damage. But yeah, if you want a good benchmark, you can just go in game and just basically remove your key passives. Like just don't play gushing wounds and uh, just start spinning on your woman bob. And um, I know you can still do a hundred like very comfortable even without a key passive. So yeah, woman bob is still gonna be strong. Just let the key passive away and. Uh, Spin and win the next season. We'll make updated build guides at least for Bash and for Whirlwind as well as a tier list here the next days. But yeah, I think Barbarian overall is in kind of the middle field. If I would have to give it a ranking, I think right now Rogue is the best class. Second is probably Swark. I think then comes, then might come the Barb or the Druid. And I think Necromancer right now is last. This will be my ranking right now. So Rogue best, Necro last, and then Sorg, I think second best. Barb, Druid, kind of on rank three. I'm not quite sure. Necro does have one very strong build with Bone Spirit. But overall, I think Necro got a lot of nerfs and the uniques aren't looking so great. And I think the only way that makes Barb like pretty decent after the key passive nerfs is uh, that uh, the uber uniques, the mythic uniques are buffed so much and uh, very easily or a lot easier to access this season. That's why I think the Barb is still looking uh, pretty solid. But yeah, let me know what you think. And um, I think uh, Barb is still looking very solid. And I made a poll here. You can vote as well. I'm going to put the link in the description. Um, obviously, my community is a bit biased towards Barb. But yeah, one third of you guys are still starting with Barb. And it's not all doom and gloom. Bob probably is not the best class, but uh, we'll see what interesting stuff we'll find. And Bash and Whirlwind are still very strong. I hope you enjoy, guys. Log in four more days for season start. I'll see you soon. GG. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like or a comment. I'm also live on Twitch almost every day, so come and say hi.